there was this uh, mineralogical link between thorium and rare earths and that in the 1980s our government working with other super intelligent governments decided that they would redefine the threshold for source material and in doing so they cut off 40 percent of the world's uh, production of rare earths because of the association with thorium and that happened to also cut off 100 percent of the world's heavy rare earths and nobody wanted to be in the business of holding managing or trying to dispose of source material so everybody in the value chain uh, eventually migrated to china so a 1980 NRC IAEA regulation was the primary uh, uh, mover for transferring the entire industry to China. And if anybody tells you that China stole that technology, slap them. No, every single one of those countries did it, companies did it voluntarily because the alternative was for them to somehow manage this, this risk. So today, uh, you know, we're facing all of these problems. John invites me to talk and he thinks I'm gonna talk so great about thorium and I'm like, thorium is this huge problem if we could just get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I finished my whole spiel and a bunch of the people in the room are like, they're on the other side of the fence, they're like, how much thorium you got? I'm like, well, dun, 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 dun. carry the one. About 50,000 tons a year we need to get rid of and all of a sudden you could literally feel like brain activity in the room like like there were sparks flying it's that you know it's that picture of tesla in that room right one of these guys gets up and he goes you could power half the hemisphere you could power the entire western hemisphere another guy goes no more than that and i'm like these people are completely insane <laughs> so i came to this first thing and with no clue and then Within a few months, John and I had gone on a few crazy missions together, and I'm like, look, your problem is you need to make this stuff useful. My problem is I need to you know, find a use for it. So, you know, it was like Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, but without all the guitar solos. Um, and um, our big strategy uh, really was a good strategy. Um, we were we went to uh, Congress and we went to three administrations and we said hey you know we can end the rare earth uh, uh, China monopoly by simply you know fixing the language around the source material we don't want to do away with it we want to make the world safer we want to make a way for those materials to flow to a very safe place because right now they're just being dumped into tailings repositories they're being dumped into the environment and so you know we made some traction we got a bill introduced twice in the house and in the, in the senate we had the same bill offered up three times as a an amendment to the ndaa the defense bill um, but our opponents who had commercial interests that were different than ours were more successful uh, and the opponents were people that uh, built uh, based their entire business model on rare earths being permanently scarce and at very high prices our solution would have allowed lots of uh, uh, rare earth laden thorium materials to flow through rare earths would have been cheap and abundant and apparently nobody likes that so our report card for that is a solid d minus uh, we got everything introduced we educated a lot of people uh, in the end, our last big sponsor was uh, Senator Rubio. Um, he had a constituent in his state with a very serious actinite issue that could be solved. In the end, uh, his staff told us, these people on the other side of the equation, uh, the other side of the, we're in the rare earth mining business, they just, they're everywhere, they have influence in every state, we're just really not getting any traction. So, um, so, we, we had to essentially drop half the concept. And today to report what's going on is um, we, we have removed the rare earth cooperative concept and all of the language pointing out uh, these, the goal of moving these materials from, uh, from tailings waste into a value chain to make the United States secure for these materials. Uh, uh, and uh, essentially get the functionality of moving the thorium uh, into 
Uh, um, let me let me back up. Uh, 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 even though we don't talk about the rare earths, the functionality is all there. It's just not obvious anymore. But what we did was we created a way for those materials to flow through and for a manageable uh, um, uh, uh, mechanism for getting all those materials under proper management. And we have a piece of legislation uh, that we've been working on for uh, maybe eight months, maybe a year. Um, it's really ready for prime time. We have probably four members in the House and four members in the Senate, bipartisan, all interested in sponsoring it. As Eric said, and he absolutely right, this is the most receptive audience for changes in nuclear I've seen ever. Um, and um, so we'll be pushing that with the, uh, the new Congress and um, we'll see how that goes. Uh, if, if we're lucky, uh, if we're fortunate, if we get an audience and we get a little momentum, uh, we'll be able to largely solve the rare earth problem, but more importantly for these folks here, create a system where thorium is no longer permanently grouted, cemented in place into tailings ponds or dumped into tailings ponds that have that, that, that tend to leak and then go through into the the um, water table in states like Florida so hopefully we're lucky uh, we'll keep you updated um, and uh, that's all I have my dog ate my homework um, so I can answer any question you want as long as it's not sports related uh, I'm sure you know what the best thing is to do to get that uh get a bill passed through Congress, but I'm uh, kind of shocked to hear about the, uh, the and really bummed to hear about the fact that the cooperative isn't going to happen. That's, that's uh, we aren't calling it a cooperative. Very similar things will happen. We just don't draw any attention to it. Okay. It, it, it. So, yeah, I mean, this is the problem. When you have, as I have said to pretty much all my old good friends in this room, the way uh, our political system works is it's built on protecting legacy capital. So anybody making money, anybody writing checks, anybody sponsoring and promoting political office, they essentially control what happens and their interest is to preserve where they're at relative to everybody else. So regulations, uh, uh, um, legislation, uh, policy tends to protect people in those positions. And so you have companies that have gotten significant federal funding uh, that want to protect their position. So they successfully go in and uh, derail what may be more in the United States' long-term interest. This is the same for nuclear. That's why we're all here. It's the same for everything else. So it's very hard. I've been, I went back to my third grade class and I got that How a Bill Becomes a Law movie. Me and the girl are studying it. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it's very challenging. So basically, uh, the language has changed. We'll still have most of the functionality, but it is not apparent and nothing exists in words in the, in the bill, the proposed bill, that they could point to that's a threat to them. My question is going to be, are there any components that will be retained? And so, uh, yeah, it will be retained. Thank you. Um, is there any way that a state like the state of Colorado could set up a uh, thorium repository and license it under the authority of the state, or is that impossible? So after spending about $100,000 on that query, the answer is no. Uh, after spending about that much money, what you find out is uh, going through the federal procedure, you could, uh, um, this is a summary of a very expensive letter. For somewhere between two million and twenty million dollars in two years and twenty years, you could get something that's almost what you want, but as you start using it, it's not going to do what it's going to fail. So, so the problem is no one has ever. Uh, the, the NRC's never had to create that kind of a repository, and the difference between, you know, uh, 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 traditional uh, nuclear fuels that can also have dual use and very dangerous transuranics, uh, that the, the storage needs, the management needs, they're very, very different than thorium. So, uh, so the 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 bright spot in in this research was that. The NRC literally 
congressionally has authority to make exceptions. And through these exception authorities, we're essentially going to try to create uh, what would be um, a new pathway for a specific use because all of the legislation that currently exists is for uranium milling operations and that is completely different from the extractive process of uh, capturing rare earths and, and then managing the thorium. I, why would one of your biggest advocates be Mosaic down in Florida? Because thorium is stopping them from spending their final phosphate. In fact, when I made inference that uh, Rubia was very inclined to support us, I'm not ever allowed to mention who that firm was, but they happen to preside in that state, and they, and they are supportive, right? Uh, but they, they don't want to draw any attention to their problem, right? They have a serious problem, and, and their problem could become the nation's problem if someone decided to spin it into some fear-mongering uh, you know, it can go very, very bad. I remember I was in the White House, was having a meeting with the uh, the uh, Kevin Kerrigan, who I think I, I think that's his name. He would, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's like the number two guy in the National Security Council. We have a White House lawyer in the room. We've got him and like two assistants, and I'm explaining this situation about how things can go bad. And I start explaining how this could turn into a PR nightmare. And one of the guys is taking notes. And I look over and I said, you have to erase everything you just put down there. And he looks and he smiles at me and I go, no, I'm serious. That's discoverable. You can't even put that in print. Do not write it, just listen and, and, and learn. And when I was done, they all understood. The, the same people that make fertilizer, they're in the food producing business. They've got an issue, and that issue is related to things that scare people. And if you wanted to take advantage of that and make a name for yourself as, you know, some lunatic, you know, uh, what's the woman that makes all those great nu nuclear's bad videos, right? <laughs> Kildacott, right? I mean, so so it's a very dangerous situation for them and others. And so we, everybody tries to be respectful, uh, and we do get support from people like that. But at the end of the day, you need members of Congress to understand and act, and, and this is a really good envir environment for it right now. Tell me a little bit, I know there, there's been some discussion about uh, pumped hydro, about green steel. Uh, another, because we don't have enough to do, yeah, there is another project we're working on. So I, I got into this mess because I bought a bankrupt iron ore mine and uh, when we started looking at reopening the iron ore mine, we found out there was this stuff all over the place called rare earths. And coming from a kid who never passed a chemistry class in my life in high school, I was like, eh, I don't even know what that is, but the rare words there, that's good. So uh, that, that essentially set me on a mission. I just told this story yesterday to um, the folks over the university in Tennessee. Um, we were looking at reopening the iron ore mine. I had the best engineers in the world working on that, which left me to do something so unimportant as to figure out what rare earths were. And this is a true story. I, I go through, there's about seven bankers boxes on all the discoveries they made and everything else. And within 90 days, I had figured out that, the, that these were critical materials to our national security, to all the technologies we'd be developing in the future, and that the US did not have one single component of the value chain. We weren't mining it, we weren't refining it, we weren't turning it into metals, we weren't turning it into magnets. And you know, this was like, this was a, a side project to the big project. And I sent a letter to my congressman and my senator. I ended up getting meetings in the Pentagon in 2009, I went to the Pentagon, laid all this out for him. And this is how I got on the path with John. And the only reason I agreed to go with John because I was going to DC anyway. <laughs> and that's where the uh, came from. And it's been absolutely one of the best relationships I've ever had in my life. I, I said wife, that was a, you know. <laughs> but anyway, um, that's it. We are working, we are working on another project. Uh, reopening the the rare earth deposit and the iron ore mine and we are working inside the confines of the DOE H2 hub program for the production of green steel so we'll see how that goes
Yeah. Yeah, one more. Uh, uh, has the uh, Russia-Ukraine conflict and uh, yeah, all the saber rattling as a result of that added some urgency to re-securing uh, domestic supplies of rare earth metals? <sighs> <laughs> Um, I think it's created so many problems that it's, it's almost as helpful as it is harmful because everybody's chasing their tails. But there is, I would say what is more important than the Russia situation is that the same folks that helped create that environment are creating an environment and escalating an environment with China, which is the folks who actually control all of these critical resources. And we are pushing this game into a zone where it's gonna go very, very bad. When we start denying them the ability to get the chips they need, they have to respond. They actually have a bigger stick than we do. And that is if they withdraw these materials from, uh, from Western nations, because they're not just gonna cut us off, because our friends will sell us what we need. And when they cut everybody off, they're gonna cut off and shut down every assembly plant in the world for practically everything, because it's everywhere. So I think China is, is a bigger problem. I think we have folks uh, that um, um, are playing with uh, something a lot worse than matches, and uh, obviously they have no fear of uh, a reprisal or anything else. Uh, I don't know what to do about it because most of those people aren't even elected. Uh, Jack Wyvern and, and, and here. And uh, Jim, is there anything that the, uh, the people here can do uh, back home to, uh, to lobby and to educate uh, politicians in our states to uh, make something new happen? Because this sounds crucial. So, look, everybody here is doing everything we can for these issues. They're important. And this is sad to say, but I, I'm coming to the conclusion that, that uh, there is no returns from education because you put the energy out there and, you know, the hamster comes back to the same spot on the wheel and you've gotten nowhere. The politicians don't respond to information. Politicians react to situations. And I'm going to tell you who your best friends are and yesterday they were not. Your best friends today are the people that have pushed this renewable green dream a little too far. Yeah. And they've done us all a wonderful service because all of the people that like to follow and like to believe, they were all in, they're in 100%. And now people like you are starting to look at it and you're starting to apply even the most rudimentary engineering or mathematical principles and saying that's impossible and so now you've got a president and a congress and you've got a bunch of countries committed to this net zero and the and the every one of them is standing in the pantheon of idiots naked as can be <laughs> They pick the destination and there's only one way to get there and it's nuclear. So the good news is they pushed it too far. They're fully exposed. And now it's not education bringing us there. It's momentum. I think we're going to get there.